My name is Michael Gordon White and welcome to Candid Street. In this video, I'm going to talk all about where to start. Let's get started. Okay, here we go. Let the day begin. We've gone through everything up until this point to be able to go out onto the streets of our city to take pictures. We're ready. Or are we? Maybe all that fussing with gear and settings was just a stall. Maybe we don't have a clue how to go about actually taking a picture we'd all agree to be considered a street shot. Maybe we've never gone out with this intent before. Yes, we've gone out into the city, but not to take pictures like this. Maybe we're absolutely terrified to try. I'm not sure exactly why this happens to us, but for some, this is our reality. Just breathe. This is not easy. Thankfully, over time, this activity we call street photography does become easier. But at the start, let's just say we should start slowly. Regardless if we're the seasoned pro or a new kid on the block, we've all been here before. Our first time out. And the full weight of that act will hit us as soon as we go through the door. We'll be completely aware that everyone we see just knows. They'll see our camera and they know exactly what we are up to regardless if we are actually shooting or not. It will affect how we walk, we'll look like we don't really have a reason for being out on the street normally, as in going somewhere to a destination as an example. It will feel awkward and it will definitely be something we need to overcome if we want to succeed. When I first started out, in fact, the very first time I went out, it was completely dark, being the middle of night. No one could really see what I was up to, but at the same time, I was having trouble seeing anyone myself. I was using my old Pentax K1000 shooting black and white film. I didn't come home with very much, I recall, but it was a start. Fast forward to the spring of 2013, when I first seriously went out to try this. It was the middle of a sunny day, and it was hard. Just going out with my camera was hard enough, but the thought of actually taking a picture? No way. I remember thinking, how am I ever going to do this? So I just started walking. That's it. Just walk. Go out and enjoy the day for what it is. Enjoy being out in the city. Check it out. Breathe and let it sink in. You are doing nothing wrong. You're just walking around with a camera. Perhaps you'll see something interesting and safe to get you started. That's right, a squirrel. I actually took a picture of a squirrel and a lousy one at that, but it was a picture. Hey, I thought to myself, maybe I can do this. So I started to relax and just kept going. I soon realized no one cared what I was doing. They were too busy worrying about what they were doing. No need to worry about me. Yes, I was aware that some people noticed my camera, but as I wasn't holding it up to take a picture of them, it wasn't an issue. Keep walking. Then it dawned on me. What if I shot a reflection of a person? Hey, that might work. So, as I was walking, I came across this interesting storefront with a big window. So I stayed there with the camera pointed in the direction of the window and looked into the reflection as people walked by. I took a few shots. Nothing happened. No one noticed. And then I saw a couple coming and with a little luck I managed to take what I think was my first successful street shot. Yes. I didn't realize it at the time, but as I think back now, I was making it hard on myself this first time out. I was in an area that at that time of day didn't have too many people out and about. Yes, it was easy to single out a subject to find a proper shot, but with no one around it was too easy to be noticed. Fortunately, my direction of walking was headed for the heart of the city and it soon didn't take long to find a place with lots of people. My kind of place. That's right, the kind of place that I love because I can just blend right in with the crowd and simply check out what's happening. So I did. Walking is one thing to do while out shooting street, but standing works just as well. It seems so obvious now, but at the start, this was a big thing for me. Just stand somewhere. Again, just relax and take it all in. Like I explained in a previous video of mine, just go out and observe people. See what they're up to. Go to a place where it's busy so there's lots of people coming and going, and some just hanging out, just like me. This is where things start to become really fascinating for me. 
I've never really gone out like this to just watch people. And as I didn't actually live in this big city, being in the middle of all this hustle and bustle blew my mind. I started seeing shots everywhere. I wasn't taking these pictures yet, but I began to see them. This was a step in the right direction. It was incredible. So I just settled in, I relaxed, and in time started to take some pictures. Again, nothing happened. No one noticed. Heck, it was so crazy where I was at that time of day, no one could care less. It was great, but again, I wasn't making it obvious. The camera was stuck to my chest, and I would carefully sneak my hand up and press the button. And if I started to get nervous for being in one place too long, I just started walking again. This was my first real lesson. Don't stay in one place too long because people will notice. So off I'd go again. And this became a thing for me. Walk for a time, stop and hang out for a bit, and repeat. You'll find this the easiest way to get started. If you are really nervous at first, just try doing this walking and standing without your camera. But do this with intent. Do this to see a picture. You may not be able to take a shot, but seeing this shot is half the battle. And not having your camera with you takes away all the pressure. In fact, I do this all the time now. I can't turn this off. I see pictures everywhere I go. But back to starting out. What I'm trying to explain here is that you have to get used to just being out in the street. At first it may be difficult, but keep trying and you'll find that after a while, you'll find that it can be really amazing being out there. That is if you are open to it. So start without your camera if needed. And when you get more comfortable, bring the camera along, but don't take any pictures. You'll know when you're ready to take a shot. Walking is great. It'll relax you and get your blood flowing and your mind thinking. And before you know it, you'll be fully aware of everything around you. Your mind will let go of everything that isn't important and you will begin to see, maybe for the first time. And what you see may really surprise you. And this ability will develop over time. You will become more and more focused in this moment and you will begin to feel fully alive. Again, that is if you are open to it and you let yourself go there. And when you do, that's where the magic will begin. You'll see the shot. Then more importantly, you will begin to start taking these shots and you'll miss and you will fail many, many times. The timing will be wrong, the camera will glitch, the shot will be blocked, hundreds of things will go wrong. But then on that one fateful day, everything will come together perfectly and you will get that shot. And as I explained in the introduction of my book, People Photography, Life and the Street, from that day forward, you will be hooked. So for now, just start walking and when things look interesting, stop and check it out. Simple enough, right? Just get used to this for now. What comes next will be reacting to a situation that you think will have the potential to turn into a shot. The next step beyond just walking around and standing in one place is reacting to a situation. This reacting thing goes back to the activity of observing people. If you do this long enough, you will begin to notice things. You will start to anticipate situations. Things will start to stand out. It will no longer just be one big crowd of people. The streets will start to look different. You'll notice how the sunlight is hitting the scene. You will notice how the crowd moves and stops. You will start to become one with the crowd and you will move and stop right along with it. You will start to see that light changes throughout the day, especially if you come back to the same location often. You will begin to see how the crowd changes throughout the day as well and on different days of the week. A crowd together on a hot summer night will be completely different than the one at lunchtime on Monday and you will start to pay attention to the pulse of the city. You'll get a feel for it. There will be some days that everything feels just right and then there will be days that the vibe will be all wrong. You can't change this. You can't fight it. This is all just part of what the city gives out, what you will become more aware of every time you go out. You will have good days and bad that have nothing to do with the city, but rather everything to do with what you experience personally. But all this is to say, when you are out and about, something will stand out and you will see its shot potential. And more importantly, you will begin to react to this situation. This is where you will begin to make a shot rather than just take a shot. And this is a vitally important step because this is where the artist in you starts to communicate. Your pictures will start to have a voice and after a while, a personal style will start to develop, your style in fact, and we'll begin to see how you see the world. 
Now, as you start to notice all of this, it is important to react in order to try and get some shots, but don't overreact. This would be a bad idea because it would draw too much attention to what you're trying to do. There are tricks to get around this, and I will fully explain later in future videos. But for now, just go slow with all of this. Start by being very selective about what you want to photograph. This will be hard to restrain yourself when you first start to see pictures everywhere, and this will happen, but slow down and take your time. Start with simple shots where people or situations such as lighting come into your field of view instead of you chasing after them. And when I say field of view, I'm referring to the field of view of the lens you are using. And as I've said before, getting used to what your lens of choice gives you without looking through the viewfinder will take practice to get it right. You'll miss some shots, being too tight and mistakenly cropping parts that you may not want cropped. But don't delete these quote unquote mistakes because as I will explain further later on, sometimes these missed shots might become acceptable as you discover your shooting style. Just get used to taking shots and reacting to situations as they arise for now. We will refine both technique and our photographer's eye as such as we continue this pursuit. So as you continue to walk throughout the city, or if you stand still to take it all in, you will notice things without even trying. They will come to you. That's right. If you are fully aware of what's happening, you will begin to see situations or shots come to you. I'm not entirely sure how this happens, but all I can say is that you have to let yourself be open to this experience. If you let yourself go, let your mind be completely clear of everything else but what is right in front of you, I truly believe that you will attract these situations to you. I don't know how else to say it, but the universe will open up to you at just the right time and that missing puzzle piece will fall into place in what we call a street scene. You will experience this all day long, time after time, whether you are out shooting or not. If you look for it, it will happen. I just have to teach you how to capture this fleeting moment, and your reaction to this will be as instantaneous as the sprinter at the block's reaction to the sound of the gun at the start of a race. There will be no conscious thought to this really. You will just know. It will feel right. You will know it, and you will also know it when you hesitate and miss a shot because you didn't take it. But this is something that you will have to go through many times, and many times, unfortunately, you will fail. This reaction needs to be developed and this is something that cannot be rushed. This has nothing to do with street photography specifically, but rather photography in general. I was shooting many years before the first time that I went out to try street photography and because of this and because I put a lot of thought into how I would actually go about taking these shots, my first attempts were successful for the most part. At least I was satisfied enough to know I was on the right track. I needed much more work to perfect my technique, years in fact, but it was enough to know I could do this and my confidence grew with each time I went out and yours will too. Start slow, look for the shots, get used to being as one with the people in the city. Work on the reaction, if not actually taking the shot, but seeing it. Even to the point of saying click. I do this all the time. It's become a game for me. When I have the time, regardless of where I am or what I'm doing, I pretend to be out shooting. I turn it on as such. This turn it on thing is where I let everything else melt away and I become fully concentrated on my surroundings. I see everything. I feel it. I experience the moment, but more importantly, I'm open to it. And there it is, that perfect moment where everything falls into place as the saying goes. And you will know it for whatever reason this is, but you will know it and you will instinctively react without hesitation and you will get that shot and everything else will fall away and you will be so fully concentrating on getting that shot almost to a fault that when you look back at this picture, you won't believe that it actually happened. It will be hard to explain how perfectly things came together. In fact, I mostly don't believe that I was responsible for taking the shot, but rather the shot was taken through me and this was meant to be. Everything just aligned. I only feel responsible for being prepared and ready and open to this moment for it to happen. Again, I don't know how else to explain this and I know that it may sound a little corny, but I truly hope you experience this. It's priceless. With regards to attracting these situations or images to you, as I said before, what I'm referring to is the chance encounter. 
These are the shots that just happen. As in someone just passed you by, you saw the image again within a split second and you reacted out of instinct. I'm always shocked when I review these shots only because I can't understand how they came together so perfectly other than that I think that they were meant to be. This fleeting encounter was presented clear as day and I recognized it and reacted. I truly believe these images happen to us all day long but it's the ability to capture them that is everything that I pursue. They are magical moments and when you review the day's worth of images, you will immediately realize you have a special shot. That's what this is all about. So start slow at first, don't try to force this. Unfortunately, it does take time, but be grateful for this. Just being out in the city is a joy in itself, or at least it should be. This is why we shoot street photography, is it not? For the love of the city and more importantly, for the people of the city, this is everything. So start slow. Get used to being out with the camera. Go for a walk. If you find something interesting, stop for a while and take it all in. Put your mind at ease and trust that you will see these images and that they will come to you. Again, know it will take time and be okay with that. Work up to getting that shot, even without your camera. Learn from your mistakes and enjoy the experience. Okay, well, that's it for now. I know that was a lot to take in. Um, I hope you enjoyed. If you like what you see and you learned anything, please give it a like, please subscribe, and please turn on notifications. And we will see you again on Candid Street. Take care.